Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a fun haul to share. I am sharing my Amazon educational purchases as of late. Uh, if you were to go through my Amazon purchases lately, you would see it is mostly stuff that is me gearing up for the next school year. So I grabbed quite a few fun games and um, educational activities and some STEM stuff. And so I wanted to compile it all in one video and share my Amazon educational haul with you. So without further ado, here is what my Amazon history looks like. So first things first, learning resources has a huge place in my heart. Learning resources when we first started homeschooling, um, man, I think it was 2012, yes, 2012, I think, was the year we started preschool in our home. And for those first few years, our homeschooling budget was mostly curriculum, as it is at the beginning for almost everyone, with not a lot of wiggle room for toys, games, or activities. And so the toys and like uh, sensory play and things like that that I would grab for Isabella and then Jesse who was a toddler at the time I had to be very mindful I had to save for things um, and just be very very intentional about where I was spending some of our homeschooling money at the time because I really liked learning resources toys at the time it was where I put all of our investment we have so many of those things still now, a lot of early homeschooling memories tied to learning resources, toys, and um, some things I've repurchased because I have donated. And then, you know, when we had Annie or Eli, I was like, oh man, I wish I wouldn't have given away that, like the super sorting pie, for example. So um, yes, I love learning resources, toys, and I will probably still be buying them for my grandkids one day because I can't stop every time I see something. So that was a really long story, uh, but when I think it was Learning Resources or Educational Insights was on sale on Zulily the other day, like a couple weeks ago, and I realized that Amazon quite often runs competitive sales, and so I checked and lo and behold, both Learning Resources and Educational Insights were all at least 35 to 40% off, and so I took that as an opportunity to stock up on some stuff. Now, I did just do an, a haul from the homeschooling convention that I will link up here, but I knew when I went to that homeschooling convention that Rainbow Resource wasn't going to be there. Rainbow Resources, it, Rainbow Resource is where I usually find the fun supplemental activities and games that I buy every year. And so knowing that they weren't going to be there, I got a bunch of stuff on Amazon for about $110, I wanna say, on that particular day. Um, and I'll show you those things first. So I got this um, Learning Resources crash -a -pult. So it's a build it, launch it, solve it engineering game. It looked really fun. I thought the kids would really enjoy this, at least my boys, and then Annie will as well. Um, and so uh, that's what it looks like there. But I grabbed that, and again, it was that everything that I'm showing you from Learning Resources and Educational Insights was at least 35% off. Um, the next thing I grabbed from Learning Resources was this time activity set. Eli could really use some more help with time, and then I know that Annabeth will be coming up on it shortly, and so I thought this would be a good investment, so I got this. And also, to go along with crash a pulse, and I guess I opened it upside down, is Pendulonia, Pendulonium, which is a stack it, swing it, smash it engineering game. So this is another STEM challenge, and we have already opened this, and Annabeth and I sat on the floor and played with it for quite a while the other day, and it was fun, very fun. I also got this Learning Resources STEM Force and Motion activity set, which I thought would be a good one to have on hand as well. At the end of the video, I'll show you how I store these because a lot of people will ask me quite often, like, where do you store all of your toys and games? My uh, system is very simple, so I will show that at the end of the video. And then I believe this is the last Learning Resources item here. Um, it's some swamp, which Eli could use some help with his quick um, addition and subtraction facts. So I got this for Eli and then Annie as well. So it's just addition. It's just an addition and subtraction game. I've seen it. I've actually seen this. I think for a few years. I just never felt like we needed to grab it. Um, but I think it will be beneficial to use. 
Oh, wait, one more learning resources thing. The STEM Explorers Magnet Movers. So I got this as well. I thought this would be fun to put like in some sensory play for Annabeth. Um, and also Eli is super into magnets right now. He won, he, he used his Bible bucks at church to buy a pair of magnets and he loves them. So I thought that this would be fun for him. Um, so this is just magical magnet experiments. The same day, so still in that same price range I was talking about, that $110 that I spent that one particular day, I grabbed this Educational Insights Design and Drill Activity Center. Um, so this is more so for Annabeth, although I actually think Eli will play with it too. And then I also grabbed Canoodle Head to Head, which we didn't own yet, and I do like the Canoodle uh, uh, logic games and so I grabbed this as a, a two-player canoodle game so I got this and my kids have seen it and they're pretty excited about that um, so then another thing that I bought on Amazon recently is this Osmo Pizza Co my mom has this at her house we have Osmo as well at our house but we didn't have this Pizza Co game and I thought it would be fun to take with us on a couple of upcoming road trips this does require the base. However, this is 50% off the day I bought it, so I got it for $25. Um, this does require the base, however, so you have to get one of these starter kits. You can't just buy this as is, um, but I'm super excited about this because I thought this one was really fun, and Annie's never played it before, so I think that'll be fun for her as well. And I don't know if Eli has either, so most of you guys know my mom got injured in the fall and so they haven't had as much consistent time with grandma as they used to playing with grandma's toys and doing grandma's games and so when you think that that's almost been a year uh, Annie's definitely never played with some of that stuff and Eli might not have even been ready to play with it at that time so it might be new to them I also got find and seek scavenger hunt card game I grabbed this for our um, homeschool co-op for next year uh, to do with some of the younger kids. Oh, I thought I had this opened already. So we are going to be doing some nature study in that co-op and I thought that this would be fun for the little kids. So you just give them something to find. You can deal three cards to each player, look at all three cards and find one thing that matches all three words. First one back wins, play again until the cards are used. Or you can just play find and seek, deal five cards to each player. A race to find five things that match or you can do find and seek back in a flash turn over the top card of the deck each player hurries to find an item that matches the card I don't know if I'm gonna try to do it like any of those I think I was just gonna pass them out as ideas to give the kids something to look for so you've got lumpy fuzzy soft hard pink green brown blue okay let's see smooth rough teeny small large gigantic stripes spotted scratchy silky round I just thought it would be fun for the um, preschool age kids to participate in nature study if they are if it's not like a topic that they're super into so there's that I will link all of this in my Amazon store down below and then I grabbed a couple of books so first one is this book dumbing us down by John Taylor Gatto you have to be in the right mood to read anything by him, but um, I was in the mood to read this book when I ordered it. And so this one, it talks about um, curriculum. Uh, let's see, I haven't read it yet, but, but what I've read about it. Um, something along the lines of like how kids learn uh, and curriculum and how schools have it wrong and all that, you know, all that John Taylor Gatto stuff. So um, I got this to read this summer. And then the last thing that I got was the Wild and Free Book Club. So I actually bought this, I pre-ordered it, so I got it delivered the day it released. This is by Ainsley Arment. And this one is 28, yeah, 28 activities to make books come alive. Of course, it's got the beautiful Wild and Free photography throughout. And it has activities for the books. Uh, how to host a book club and then it has the adventures of Tom Sawyer Anne of Green Gables around the world in 80 days black beauty Charlotte's web the crossover Esperanza rising the evolution of Calpurnia Calpurnia Tate I've never heard of that book before mother daughter book club farmer boy from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler the green ember Heidi the Hobbit Island of the Blue Dolphins 
falling in love with authors oh just information um the lion the witch and the wardrobe little house in the big woods a little princess little women mrs frisbee and the rats of nim the side my side of the mountain collaborating with great authors peter pan pippi longstocking robin hood roll of thunder hear my cry the secret garden the swiss family robinson treasure island and the Vanderbeekers of 141st Street. Um, and so I am very excited about this. I think it will be fun to have a little pizzazz put back into some of our read-alouds. Um, I tend to choose read-alouds that are on track with where we're at in history. And so my mind just is always tracking that way. And I have been wanting to go back and pick some uh, read alouds that aren't necessarily like on on theme with where we're at in our school year and so I think that this will give a few fun ideas to theme something out do a couple of activities spice up a poetry tea time etc so I thought that this would be really fun and anything by wild and free I will just click buy now without even reading the review so I am a sucker for all things wild okay, and free so before I let you go I wanted to share how I store our homeschooling games and toys I think people have the wrong impression that people think I have some elaborate system and I'm like, nope, I put stuff on a shelf. It's very simple, but I will show you how I uh, store specifically like toys like this that have individual little bits and pieces that could ruin the whole thing if you lose a piece. So as I bought these things online, I got on my Target app and I ordered these containers. I've used these same Sterilite containers for years. They are 16 quart, um, so 15 liter, yes, 16 quart, 15 liter bins. They are so, they're like $3.99. Anyway, I ordered six of them the other day because I ordered quite a bit of stuff and these just stack up well on our floor in our storage room. We have like a bunch of shelving in there that I keep games on and then the one shelf is like, if the bottom shelf starts about three and a half feet off the ground and so I have these stacked by three or four at a time and there's just a whole bunch of these bins and then I'll rotate the bins in and out so um, I will show you kind of how I keep things in here so we have like two or three sets of gears so I have a whole set of gears in here everything that goes along with it that they would need for it in there and then here's another example of how I store things together so this one is all coding toys so I've got Botley and then I've got the learning resources coding critters in here. So I like to just put things in like gallon or two gallon size Ziploc bags and then put them together in here. So for example, I would put pendulonium and I would also put crash a pole in bags and put them in here. And then if I felt like I still needed this box, I could put this on top of those two things. And then I would have this box of STEM toys, a new box of learning resources STEM toys, and then it would just stack right on top of the other boxes. So, so simple, guys. I mean, I ran into Target one day years ago, thought the little shoe boxes were too small. These larger Sterilite bins were just the perfect size, and I've never looked back. So the trick, though, for me is as I'm ordering things on Amazon or Rainbow Resource is to also get on Target and order the a number of bins that I think I may need so that things don't just end up like uh, otherwise I would be tempted to just set these on top of the bins and then you know the kids rip well for example I think they ripped this box open so they ripped the box open and then everything doesn't fit in there right and then we lose a piece and then the game's not good anymore so I just always order as I'm ordering the game I'm adding $3.99 to order new storage for it and that is my whole entire system that's it. That's all I do. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what types of educational resources you have been buying lately. Uh, what are you uh, shopping for this summer, gearing up for another school year? Do you tend to go toward the educational toys and games or do you like buy all of the books? I haven't hit that stage yet, but I'm sure it's coming in the next few weeks. And if you follow me on Instagram, there may or may not be a fun little educational giveaway going on over there in honor of today's video. So I will see you guys over on Instagram. Otherwise, I will see you back here very soon. Bye, friends.